Um, thank you. Uh, so I'm Tatsuro from Chiba University, and uh, this is uh, uh, the work uh, of me and uh, the hero Taka. Hero is there, and uh, so this is a very great work of him uh, while he has been finishing uh, his PhD course uh, in the spring. So uh, this is uh, this is my talk, and I I'd like to uh, thank all of the, my colleagues and the friends and the uh, Tokyo University and also the the community. Um, including the, the bio hackathon uh, happening in Japan and Europe, and then now uh, we 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 had a Middle East bio hackathon as well in this uh, February. Um, so also a big thanks to the SMB, CCB, and the Bosk organizers, and uh, I'm really happy to be again here to present my work, and also the to the to the OSS communities. Um, so. Um, my talk, this is all about the reproducibility. <coughs> so, you know, so we are by many students, we are in a, in a SMB in the Basque session. So we I think we all uh, recognize the, the importance of the reproducibility. But the, I want to rephrase it again. So why is it so important? It is because your work needs to be reproducible for for all except review. So it's it's for good science, right? And and also for you. So you need to have a very efficient way to do your research. So imagine that in an ideal world of the data science and in biomedics, so you can perform the exactly same data analysis. Again, again, effortlessly. So when your sub is updated, when your clique wants to reuse your script, and when a reviewer too wants you to rerun it with the different parameters, and it works, and the dog looks happy, right? Okay, so you expect the next slide. No, in reality, <laughs> it is not. The so dog looks not so happy. So your, your script fails. Yes. We all experience like that. So that when your subway is updated, your script fails. When your colleague wants to reuse your script, I don't know why, but the script fails. And when a reviewer wants to rerun it, it, it never worked. And it's just three months later, your script will fail. So, so we have been working very, very um, hardly to accomplish the reproducibility of the data analysis. And uh, we all know that uh, why this is important, but we still have uh, been working for this very, uh, very hard. And uh, there, let me explain uh, what the, the communities, open source communities have done uh, to resolve this issue. So um, to reproduce the, the data analysis by uh, reproducing the software environment. So this is a very basic one, like uh, using the package managers, like uh, Bioconda, Bioconductors, and also and many other the package managers there. And also the software containers, like the Biocontainers, including that uh, encapsulating the whole environment to reproduce the, the data inspiration. And also um, the reproducibility, the data analysis procedure itself is very important. So the workflow platforms like a Galaxy and also the Terra and also then many other options for the platform to execute your workflow. And also there are many uh, workflow languages out there and a common workflow language and a widow, next flows, name we can make and uh, any other more than hundreds, thousands workflow languages there. Hundreds, yeah, man. Uh, but uh, and also uh, it is very important to share the workflows as well. And the workflow registries are also out there, like an NF core, and also the workflow hub. And also, I have presented the, the one uh, software uh, called the Yabis, uh, last uh, Basque in, uh, in Madison last year. And it is a platform to validate your workflow to share the workflow uh, that really works. And also, uh, there is a concept called uh, the workflow as a service, which is uh, formerly known as a workflow execution service, which uh, the GA4GH, a global alliance for genomics and the house, uh, established a standard for the, the interface, uh, the API specification to run the workload in the remote sub. Now, for example, uh, there is Elixir OS, 
and also uh, Sapporo, which is uh, our implementation to uh, enable this uh, the workflow as a service thing. So there are many, many things are happening, and about still your script fails. So uh, and because you know the so we, so we have been working very hard to you know replicate the work data analysis itself. So it is the same one running again, but the, how do we expect that the output is same? So there is a question. So outputs may vary, right? Even even with the workflow, it says I have been working with for the uh, the data science workflow of the, my microbiome project, which is uh, described in the, uh, the CWL and also they're using the, the bio containers. And uh, so it should be very, very reproducible, but they do, the output of the workflow is still different sometimes because some software uses the random algorithms. So the, the output file is uh, a little bit different. And also, uh, some tools uh, generate uh, un unsorted outputs. It's not some tools. Yeah, some some tools. But no, so I'm sorry, but it, my pronunciation is not. So. <laughs> but so some uh, some software uh, include the local file pass or the date time information in the output file. So which makes uh, the difference in the between the uh, the outputs of the different vocal lines. So um, the thing is that uh, how do we evaluate the, the output from the data analysis? <laughs> So um, we do the comparison of the two uh, worker runs and like uh, examining the, the, the exit status or the existence of the outputs and also the, the log messages of the, uh, the successfully finished the workloads. And also uh, we will examine the, the, the output file's name in a file hash like MD hash or sharp tubes. And and also, we want to evaluate the the, the, the outputs are similar enough in the biological interpretation. So we have been doing this, but the the large part of this are you know depending on the manual uh, process. So why are we doing this by hand? So that is why uh, we made an implementation to uh, accomplish this in an automatic way. So. Uh, Currently, we are using the two different implementations, uh, Sapporo and uh, Tonkazu. So Sapporo is an implementation of the workflow execution service, which I call the workflow as a service. And uh, this implementation uh, is introduced in the 2019 BASC, and uh, it's supporting the multiple workflow languages, the CWL, Widow, Nextflow, SnakeMake, and now also its flexibility to add more workflow engines. So it's basically supporting all the workflow languages. And, and uh, the, the important thing is that the Sapporo can generate uh, the summary of the local run. I mean, I mean the provenance of the local run in a research object trait, thanks to <laughs> the previous uh, talk by Rensky. Uh, so the arrow crate is, uh, I, I don't go to the, the more details of the arrow crate itself, but the arrow crate is for the, the, the record of the provenance of the scientific uh, process. So, which means that the, this uh, the output from the Sapporo has uh, uh, the provenance information of the output files, or the the, uh, the other uh, kind of the information of the workflow run is recorded there in the file, and also uh, so the here uh, we had uh, we have a new implementation called Tonkatsu, which is uh, the command line to to compare the two. Uh, our grade files generated by Sapporo, and which outputs uh, the text report and uh, which uh, reports uh, how different these workflow runs. So um, this is it. So uh, there, there is there is a scale of the Tonkatsu's output uh, is uh, fully reproduced, and then diff the file has a different, but it's accessible. And then also the file has a different files are, have different but uh, unacceptable level of the difference, and also there's sometimes uh, the each of the workflow runs uh, didn't uh, generate the, the same output, so, so like uh, the files are not found. So what uh, the the Tonkatsu is doing is uh, showing this diagram, is that uh, there are two inputs files in the above. And then first, then it uh, examined the file is uh, exists, and also they compare the checksum, 
and uh, if the checksum was different, so the, it will uh, uh, compare the, the statistics of the files. And so let me uh, more explain about the statistics. So the, the statistics of the files is generated by a specific software tool for a specific uh, the file format. Let's say uh, there is a bound file, and then so the way we, we will use that some tools to create the statistics of the BAM file and for the the mapped re sequence reads and also the unmapped sequence reads ratio or something like that to uh, extract the, the information from the fi given file. And then we will record uh, these uh, biological statistics, biological, the statistics of the biological file formats into the oral crate so that the Tonkazu can compare the different uh, the workflow runs. So uh, this is the so you you can see the examples of the the output from the, the Tonkatsu uh, the command line. So you can see the these uh, two create one create two. So these are the different workflow runs from the the same workflow uh, definitions. So and then you can see the the details and metadata uh, described in the. Uh, the workflow run create and the comparing uh, between the two runs. And then, so it will show that um, the level 3210 uh, files. And here, so we use the, the GDT kids, the best practice uh, workflow, and it tested uh, with, with the, the very same condition to run it again. And then uh, you can see that the, there is there are no uh, the very same files there. But they, they have a similar uh, the files uh, having the similar features like uh, so there is a BAM file and a BCI file and a BAM file and by they but they share the the pretty similar uh, the statistics of the the file formats like uh, so you can see the BAM file has a mapped raised ratio and also the duplicated uh, the raised ratio. And also the, the BCF file here has a line count and so on. And then you can see the uh, there is uh, there is no file from the these local lines which have a, a very different uh, statistics, which is not acceptable to say this is reproducible. And also the there are no files uh, which are not found in either of the local runs. So um, because the Sapporo can support the multiple vocal languages, it can be done for the, the different vocal uh, languages as well. So this is the example of the next flow RNA seq, and I see here you can see the you know the, the comparison, the result, and the, it's it is uh, the files are replicated, but they're slightly different, but it, within the the acceptable uh, range, and also for the CWO as well. And uh, so this is the, the example which we have done with the, the NBDC is a Japanese uh, organization is responsible for the database analysis. And also the, here's the JGA, uh, Japanese Genome Phenome Archive uh, has a standard um, workflow for the analyzing the, uh, the variant coding, uh, human variant variation data analysis software. And then it also has uh, the many uh, one, two, three, four files, which have uh, the similar statistics, but uh, they're not identical. So, um, so our uh, software and uh, how uh, how this is important and how we can uh, improve this uh, methods. So, which is described in the the, Giga, uh, the paper published in the Giga Science, and also. Yeah, so this is my final slide. So, uh, so it's it's been uh, working great, but I, you know, I, I, I think uh, there are many uh, things I, I can improve. So the first thing is that the, as the Rensky introduced, uh, there is now a local run crate, which is the, the community standard to uh, re re record the, the provenance of the workers. So current implementation uses the generic uh, research object crate. So we are switching to the, the specific workflow run crate profile and it's nearly done, I think. And also, uh, so what I showed you is that there are some examples of the bound files and the BCA files, but 
I think uh, we need to build a community standard for the, the biological format statistics, like, um, because, uh, you know, the, you know, there are many uh, biological formats and uh, um, we should have uh, the something uh, to describe the, the, the summary of the given uh, biological file, format file. And also, uh, I want to help people to uh, to build this kind of, uh, the this functionality in in a, in a workflow engine and also the workflow execution service to output the, the compatible oral grade that can be uh, compared to evaluated reproducibility. And also, uh, I want to integrate these functionalities to the the workflow registries for the so that the user can. Uh, um, check if the, the workflow is really reproduced in your own environment. And that's it. Thank you for your attention. Um, thank you very much. That was that was a really interesting talk, and um, I think the reports look really useful to come out of it. So that's great. I just have one quick question, which is kind of relating to some experience we have with our own pipelines, which is that uh, we so something we had to put in workarounds with some of our unit tests mm -hmm. is that we will have, for instance, a um, we essentially create like say say a, say a BAM file in a step that will actually be reproducible between the between two different runs. Mm -hmm. However, the only difference between the two would be basically a date stamp in the header. Um, and I noticed with your sort of workflow, from what I could see, that would then go, on, go in as a difference because you had different checksums, but the reads themselves would be identical between the two. I was just wondering whether you had any sort of plans to create some, any sort of like, you know, workarounds with that because obviously that would then come out as like you know acceptable differences rather than identical even though the content of the files themselves are essentially identical thank you yeah uh thank you that's that's a very good question and uh, that's what actually uh we have been discussing uh, how to you know make that happen so uh yeah that can happen like uh, the the rest of the file content is pretty the same but they only they had the files or something as different slightly with the with the date format or something which is i be, i think uh it's be uh, um so the, so the so the why I have uh, you know the the community standard thing uh, here is for for that kind of thing. So I think it, it, it is a problem for each uh, the file format. So we should have a a, a solution for each uh, biological file format, like a BAM file, BCA file, or something, so that we can uh, have a same um, uh, the solution for each uh, the file format, so that we can share the let's say uh, the command line to to you know say. So this is only different in, in a header information and the rest of the same or something. So yeah, um, I, th I think we, we need to have a community effort to accomplish the and uh, make more coverage to the, the wider range of the biological formats. Thank you. Thank you, Scott. Any other questions? No? Um, I've got a question. Can you actually use a microphone? Uh, thanks, for, thanks for the presentation. Uh, I've got a question about the level two reproducibility. Mm -hmm. um, how do you measure when two files are similar? Like what's the threshold? What's the metric? Oh yes. So it's a uh, so when when you run the the this to uh, uh, command line to so you can set the threshold, and then the, so if the if the the difference uh, of the statistics is uh, the, uh, lower than the uh, the threshold. It should be uh, it will be the, the difference is acceptable, and then so uh, the, but there's sometimes it's really different. Like uh, you know the tor you know if the file name is the same. That the same file is generated, but the, you know let's say uh, the mapping rate of the bound files is totally different from the another one. Then and that can be you know happen with while uh, if when the 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 statistical differences beyond the threshold. So, but it's it's up to the 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 user to run this command line too. So that the, sometimes you know it's it's acceptable if the you know, statistics is very different. I, I think it's it's not a you know 
it's up to the use cases, right? So yeah, you, you can set the threshold. 